Hi, welcome to this Light Reading Innovator Series video. I'm Ruth Brown from Heavy Reading, and today I'm joined by Manny from Amdox, who is Head of Product Management for Intelligent OSS. Hi, Manny. Hello, hi, Ruthie. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really great. So I'm looking forward to, we're going to have a conversation today about network inventory management. Hopefully you're going to share some really great um, experience, some of your perspectives of the subject. So let's dive right in, if that's okay. Right. I think to start off with, I think it's fair to say we've seen a lot of transformation within the telecommunications industry. When we consider technologies such as 5D, for example, there's been a lot of change. How do you think this is affecting service providers? What are their main challenges and what do you think they're facing with these new network deployments? So, as I said, uh, we have many changes happening in the network. We have new technologies uh, rising up. We have 5G coming with, you know, dedicated slicing and containers, network function. We have disaggregation uh, of the run and transport is changing hybrid network, virtualized and physical. So in, inter, the, the network is still remaining highly interwined with combination of physical and virtualized, um, static and dynamic. This adds a lot of complexity and you, you need a feature rich uh, type of system, OSS or inventory uh, and automation system across all of these. So you've highlighted some of the many complexity. There's a number of obstacles that we're now seeing service providers being challenged with. But I wonder if you can give me some insights about how you think we can cut through some of this complexity. How can we manage this new generation of technologies and services? And what exactly do you think is required now? So really, this complexity has had a lot of risk uh, to service providers and the potential of additional cost without the uh, ability to, to see the revenue against it. So obviously impacting profit, if the right system and with really simple world automation is in place to handle all of this complexity. Um, in some cases, it's beyond a uh, human type of interaction. It requires highly heterogeneous and dynamic uh, type of uh, network management and automation. You need an AI ML driven approach in some of these cases. And you must make sure that this uh, highly automated approach is based on an accurate data because where the data is not accurate, then the automation will not help. It will just create additional fallouts and, uh, uh, and mass uh, set of issues. So data accuracy in near real time with this type of uh, changing network is a must to handle or to uh, address this type of uh, complexities and mitigate the risks that comes with it. So many, what kind of advice and insights can you give to service providers before they embark on this transformational journey? What do you think they should be thinking about for inventory modernization? That's a great question. Um, Inventory modernization is not simple. We are talking about billions of uh, objects in a uh, tier one uh, and fixed uh, mobile, um, hundreds of uh, uh, thousands of devices to manage, multiple type and multiple um, complexities around how it connects between the connectivity, the data centers, the value added services, and the services uh, that cross or intercarrier. So all of these type of complexities um, creates a huge challenge on migration. And a lot of our uh, customers are really not um, um, into this type of, uh, or, or uh, supporting this type of complexities, uh, complex type of uh, migration. We don't see this type of uh, large transformation um, any longer, and many of our customers already have uh, multiple types of inventories in place. So our approach is really to go with an evolutionary approach that builds on top of the existing inventory, evolve 
and ensure that the modernization that is needed um, comes with a gradual approach with ability to leverage existing assets for some of the existing technologies and bring together the new technologies into one single uh, view. Um, and focus on five really key characteristics. We are talking about an inventory uh, system that enables hybrid network view that is not only dynamic or only physical or only layer one or only layer two, but really supports the entire set of um, technologies across all the layers of inventory, including the dynamic uh, aspects of the new networks. Second, that it has a modernized architecture, cloud native, CI CD with rapid cadence and ability to adjust quickly to the changes. That is real time. This is a third uh, item, not uh, offline physical, but real time that connects to the network that supports event driven architecture. Uh, the four point is that has, we must ensure that the inventory approach has an evolutionary approach, doesn't need to have all the data uh, in one or, or contain internally, but can federate uh, easily data from multiple data sources into one single view. And may, maybe one of the important one, the uh, ability to have the right experience in place to take our customers or to take the service providers to this journey. And we are running a few of this. We are in more than 20 years, uh, Andox, in the inventory management uh, market. We are running multiple type of this uh, deployment across B2B, B2C, fixed and wireless. Uh, for example, we're running Vodafone multi-opco uh, inventory uh, management for Germany, for uh, UK, for uh, Romania and Czech and, and other opcos as a centralized deployment that serves multiple opcos. We are um, just being awarded at Colt for uh, replacing their legacy inventory with our uh, new inventory. We are running Comcas, which is more enterprise B2B uh, type of inventory with the complexity that comes with enterprise services. Uh, across service and resource level, by the way. We are running in Team Brazil, a complex fixed and mobile network, and many others, Sky Italy, and Tier 1 in the Philippines that is in deployment, where we also do uh, the full-blown discovery of the network. Uh, we are running our inventory on the cloud already with SCS uh, in Netherlands and with Telstra on IWS in Australia. So. We bring this experience, uh, we bring and various, uh, um, you know, type of complexities really help this uh, modernization to become more, uh, let's say, less risky, if I put it uh, in this way. Fantastic. So you've mentioned the modernization journey, and I wonder if we can delve into that in a little bit more detail. I wonder if you could perhaps share your insights and your thoughts about what kind of capabilities and perhaps tailoring that you think the inventory management systems need to support in today's networks and, and how they're going to really help service providers today. Yeah, so I've touched some of it. I think uh, the most important is to have uh, an inventory system that can run any type of network that is multi-vendor, that can run on multiple type of clouds that brings together service layer and the various layers of the network. And, and all, all in all brings an end-to-end -end visibility via a centralized single pane of glass uh, view. It must have you know, the unique set of capabilities that an inventory system needs also for um, you know, handling the modernization journeys, a multiple type of um, automation capabilities, uh, uh, enabling you know, every type of uh, situation ha to have its own, you know, right approach because I talked about it. You saw multiple type of customers come with, you know, fixed and mobile, some of which has already some transport inventory, some brings uh, the transport inventory into the bigger one. So it needs to be modular and it needs to be flexible to cater for multiple type of complexities that an inventory system 
uh, may have. Um, and it needs to have a federation approach. So not all of these inventory migration modernizations st um, starts or, or will, will ever reach to a fully consolidated view. So strong federation uh, over multiple inventories is also a very, very important capabilities uh, in, in this inventory modernization journey. So today's networks as well, they're extremely dynamic. And I think we can all say the speed and the pace at which people want to get new services and also sort of the operational agility is very different to previous generations. So how do you see this being supported by the new inventory systems? So as said uh, very correctly, the dynamic type of uh, behaviors of the network requires an inventory that is much more uh, real time, that uh, can support rapid changes of the network. So if you think about it, in the physical world, a network element configuration or model is changing once a year or every few months, while a network function configuration can change on a weekly, maybe daily basis. So you need a different paradigm even for this type of inventory system that needs to, ha to handle both though. Uh, near real-time inventory that can manage very um, you know, flexibly the configuration management and the ch rapid changes that happening across the various network functions. Um, it should obviously make sure that the operational aspects are handled, that it can run on any cloud. Uh, the infrastructure is changing. We, we must ensure the inventory system adhere to it. Uh, and the operability and TCO uh, is reduced. So our customers cannot uh, keep you know, expanding or adding new inventories, each and every system added on a different platform and connecting it all together creates a lot of uh, cost that uh, we must ensure uh, we take away and handle the whole inventory in a holistic manner and with the, the right TCO. Ah, one more thing, openness. Yeah. Standard APIs and openness are really key because the, the inventory systems are typically integrated to dozens of the various systems in planning, engineering, fulfillment, assurance. So open APIs, DMF beta uh, APIs, uh, Etsy, 3GPP are really key in a modernized inventory system. And with that, I believe uh, we concluded. Thank you for the opportunity, Ruth. Thank you so much, Manny. Cheers. <laughs>